Why have we gathered in this place on this morning? We have gathered to worship our God. And I would invite you to join in that worship. If you'll find the call to worship in your bulletin and stand as you're able, we'll join us reading responsibly. We gather as God's beloved children. We come together as a people whom Jesus calls into community. We have come to give thanks, to pray and sing, to be with others. Let us worship God. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is found in your Methodist hymnal number 92. We're going to be doing verses 1 through 4 of For the Beauty of the Earth. Hymn number 92. Still in your hymnal, we have the affirmation of faith as the Apostles' Creed, found on page 881. Let's read together. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. It's good to see all of you with us on this rainy Sunday morning, but we need the rain, so I'm grateful that we're getting it. 
And it's wonderful to be together here in this place where we can be dry, where we can worship God, where we can be together in fellowship. Now you might notice uh, we have a few folks who, you know, embarrassingly all wore the same t-shirt today. Does anybody see that? Yeah, we've got our Hero Hotline t-shirts on because we had Vacation Bible School this last week. We had 60 kids running around this church, y'all. 60 kids. I love Vacation Bible School, and I am glad it is in the past. <laughs> It was so much fun to get together. We did crafts, uh, we did music, we did snacks. You're gonna hear a little bit more about it in just a second, but I'm excited for us to be able to celebrate Vacation Bible School today. Um, if you are visiting with us for the very first time or whether you've been coming here since you were just a little infant, we want to know that you are here. We have some connect cards in the pews. You can fill them out and put them in the offering plate later in the service. You can also just scan the QR code on the back of the bulletin with your phone and fill it out online. If you're worshiping with us virtually, you can find the Connect card on the front page of our website. We've got a great service in store for you now. And so as we continue to worship, I... Actually, no. Now we are going to continue to worship and have our scripture reading. <laughs> And our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Galatians. If you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, we're in the third chapter, reading verses 24 through 29. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave nor free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. It says in your uh, bulletin that Jeff McCord is doing the celebration of children. That is not correct. <laughs> uh, Miss Emily is going to be coming this morning and doing a celebration of children and a Bible school update. So come on up, Emily. Some uh, kids are already making their way up, so everyone can come on up if uh, all the children are ready. But as they do that, I just wanted to let you guys know about what happened this past week at Vacation Bible School. As Pastor Cassie said, we had 60 kids here, and it was wild, it was chaotic, but it was so beautiful to see all of them here. Um, we had kids that came in without a buddy, and by the end of the week, they were all becoming the best of friends. And it was amazing. Uh, every day, we would uh, welcome our hero hotline and we would get a phone call and Pastor Cassie and our superhero friend Super Mirror, who is a meerkat, uh, they would, what? Oh yeah, some of the kids figured out that Will Noble was controlling Super Mirror, Georgia super detective there. Uh, but anyway, they would follow, they would get a problem, and they would work on uh, their way to solve it. So they would look into the Bible, they would find a Bible story for that day, and we would learn things like heroes are called to, anyone remember one? Work together, follow Jesus, anyone else remember one? Listen to God, two more. Show grace, yep. Yeah help others, um, but we learned all those things through games, through crafts, snacks, Bible story, what else did you do, music, and science, yes. So they just had a blast this past week. And we also had the opportunity, we had a little friendly competition between our crews to see who could raise the most uh, dry foods, canned foods, box goods, for in-town cares, which we've partnered with here before. And our winner was the Lightning League, our seven and eight year olds. But in, yeah, they, they really crushed it. They really did. We'll give them a hand. 
But in total, all four crews brought in 210 canned items. So it was really amazing, yeah. If you go up in the fellowship hall, most of the boxes are up there, and you'll see it's really a lot of things that they all brought in, and they all got really excited about it, and it was really cool to see how they all were caring about helping people in our community. All right, so we have some friends here on our t-shirts, and if you weren't here at VBS this past week, no worries. If everyone wants to turn their attention to the screen, we have a couple songs that we want to show you from this past week. All right, you guys ready? Stand up, stand up. So as you gather, that was our main theme song, Hero Hotline. And if you were a volunteer, you probably had that song stuck in your head as we did it almost every day. And well, as I think of volunteers, I just want to give a big hand to everyone in here that was a volunteer, either for the whole week or for just a couple days. So if you could stand up just so we could recognize you, uh, VBS would not be possible without you. Throughout the week, we had about 20 different people come and help, uh, help these kids learn and grow and have such an amazing week. And so we're just so thankful for all of you. All right, now with that, let's go into our children's moment. Now I did leave an element of my children's moment at my seat, let me go get it real quick. All right, so raise your hand if you know what we're talking about this summer. What's our summer series? Lego, Lego. thank you Atticus. 
So who likes to play with Legos here? We got quite a few of you. So can someone raise their hand and tell me d uh, different Lego sets they may have seen before or maybe you have? Yeah. Minecraft Lego set, yeah. A plain Lego set, mm hmm Star Wars, there's a bunch of Star Wars ones, yeah. Harry Potter, anyone else know of a Lego set? Yeah, Paul. Indiana Jones. There are so many Lego sets out there. I think really anything, oh yeah, I'm some. Ninja, yeah, there's the Ninjago series, which just probably just normal ninja ones. But there are so many Lego sets for really any interest. Here you go, Jordan. Yeah, there's a bunch of different Disney ones. I even saw a Target the other day. They had a one from the show Queer Eye, which is like, why, why, I, like, I would never think that they have a Lego set for that show, but they do. There's truly a Lego set for anything out there. Any interest you have? Is that a church? Yes, that is a church. <laughs> there's truly a Lego set out there for any interest you may have. There's a Lego set out there for anyone. There's even little Legos, like this is the normal Lego size, right? Like the really little ones, and sometimes they're hard to get apart. And that's what most Lego sets are. Yeah, there are ones smaller than that when you need just a little, like one little peg here. They're really small. Yeah, they, they make them really small, but they also make really big ones for some of our younger friends or people that can't really hold the little ones or may choke on them. They really have Legos for every person out there. Any ability, any interest, you can make a Lego, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's another, th even a cat, maybe a cat could do it with their <laughs> mouth or something, I don't know, you know, maybe. Yeah, or with their paws. <laughs> anyway, there's another thing out there that's really for everybody in the whole world. Do you guys think you might know what that is? It's God's love. God's love, yes. Yes, Jesus and God's love is for everybody. As it says in our Bible passage that we read a little bit ago now, there's neither Jew nor Greek, other one, slave or free, male or female. There's, you know, any person is welcome into God's love. They are a, a child of God. Isn't that really cool? Yeah, so no matter your interests, no matter what you look like, no matter what you think about, no matter who you are, God's love is here for you. You are a child of God. Everyone get that? All right. Well, we're going to go upstairs and maybe make our own version of our child of God. Does that sound pretty cool? All right, so if you're ready, let's go on up to, ki oh, we gotta pray first, forgot about the prayer. <laughs> All right, let's pray real quick. Everyone bow their heads, ready, pray. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us, thank you for loving us and, making and making your love available for everyone. For everyone. Amen. As the children are going upstairs, I invite you to stand in body or spirit and join in singing uh, from the uh, Faith We Sing hymnal, the small uh, paperback hymnal in your pew, number 2040, Awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. We'll sing uh, the verse through twice, and we'll have a little tag on the end. You'll, you'll catch it. <laughs>
Somebody trying to do the hand motions there? No? No? The hand motions to our God is an us? No? Okay. Maybe that was just my, uh, my adolescence days. We'll, we'll work on that with the kids upstairs. Well, speaking of adolescent years, um, some of you may know that I actually have an older brother. And ironically, his name, is, of you who know me, I'm sure that you are not surprised to learn that as far as little sisters go, I was basically the best, <laughs> right? There were no little sisters ever better than me. I never pestered him, I never bothered him, I didn't trail behind him, I didn't tell him, tell on him to my parents. I mean, I was a perfect little angel sister, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, when I was probably in maybe kindergarten or first grade, one of the arguments that my brother and I inevitably got into was about Legos. Now, we, along with all of our friends, just had a giant tub full of Legos. Now, at the time, there were Lego sets, you know, as Miss Emily was talking about, but they weren't quite as popular yet. Really, we just all had the giant tubs and made whatever, you know, came into our mind. And so, my favorite thing to do with the Legos was to build houses. All right, I would build houses, I would outline the rooms, and so I would have bedrooms and kitchens and living rooms. I always forgot the bathroom. <laughs> Apparently Lego people don't need bathrooms. I would make little bunk beds for them to sleep on, and then I would start playing house. All right, and I would give all the characters names and backstories, and then I realized they needed to go to school, so I would go and I would build a school for them to go to with all the little desks. And I essentially, you know, instead of having a dollhouse, I made my own dollhouse. But, as it goes, the problem is, is that, as I mentioned, this is sort of when Lego sets were starting to become popular. And my brother, two and a half years my senior, had just gotten some Lego sets that he was excited to put together. Now, of course, in my mind, they were just more pieces, right? I was in kindergarten, all right? We're going to give me lots of grace. I was in kindergarten, and so I just started taking pieces from his Lego sets and adding them to my Lego house. I thought that was perfect. Well, he went to build his set and didn't have all the pieces he needed. Once he realized that I was the one who had taken his pieces, sibling rivalry was in full force in our house. He was yelling at me, I was yelling at him, I denied taking his pieces, and he said that I always took his pieces. And he said that they were his Lego blocks and I wasn't allowed to play with them. There might have been some hitting, there might have been some kicking. I'm pretty sure there were some threats about, you know, I wish that you would never come home from the hospital and that I was an only child still. It got, you know, it got pretty dirty. But then, the straw that broke the camel's back came when he said, you can't play with Legos because you're a girl. Legos are for boys. <laughs> so it was in that moment that I burst into tears and ran to my mom. And I know that the whole thing in a way that only moms can do, right? But she told me that Legos are for everyone. And this phrase, it stuck with me for a long time because it's true. Legos are for everyone. Now some of you might remember the 1981 Lego ad that got pretty famous of a little red-headed red girl who was wearing overalls pictured with her Lego creation, and it said, what it is is beautiful. Does anybody remember that ad? I'm gonna post it on our Facebook page later today in case you wanna refresh your memory. But it was a perfect ad, and I say that because when you see the little girl's creation, it's pretty impossible to distinguish what it was, you know, what it was supposed to be. I think it was a house-like creation. It had a little character she had made, not even a minifigure. It was a character made of the blocks. And, but what it was was a creation of a little girl who was proud of what she had made. I bet that she would have gotten along with me as a kid as we were creating our houses and playing house together. 
And of course, we tell our young kids all the time that their pictures are beautiful, even if we can't distinguish what it is, right? I got my daughter's portfolio back from her, her uh, preschool year, and they are all beautiful. They all look identical, because they're all just a mush of colors, but they are beautiful, and I will hang them on my wall, because she is proud of her creations. And so it might be messy, it might be abstract, but you can see the love that has been put into them. And so, Legos are for everyone. But what's funny, is, though, is that the little girl who was in that ad in 1981 came back 40 years later for an interview. And in that interview, she said, in 1981, Legos were universal building sets. And that's exactly what they were for, for boys and girls. Toys are supposed to foster creativity. But nowadays, it seems that a lot more toys already have messages built into them before a child even opens the pink or blue package. In 1981, Legos were simple and gender neutral, and the creativity of the child produced the message. In 2014, when, this ad, or when the interview took place, it's the reverse. The toy delivers a message to the child and this message is weirdly about gender. Now, any of you who have ever gone shopping at a store that has toys know that there are always going to be aisles that are very pink and aisles that are very blue. And so this little girl who had grown up was lamenting this fact because she remembered when Legos were simply toys that everyone played with. Now, isn't it funny, though, that we do that? I mean, we are experts in our society at taking something and putting a label on it and putting a barrier around what it is, who it's for, and who is allowed to play with it. We even go so far as to thinking that it's healthier or safer or more accurate to say that this toy is for boys and this toy is for girls. And it's not just toys that we do this. We'll say that this activity is for young people and that one is for old people or older people. And we know that this happens in society as we go out into the world as well. I mean, we don't have to go too far back into our history where we remember the era of Jim Crow laws, where we were putting up barriers stating how things were for whites only or for blacks only. We put on barriers based on abilities or disabilities. We put barriers on things based on political persuasions or economic status, race, gender, age, sexuality, all sorts of things. And to be fair, most of the time we don't even realize that we're doing this. We've been raised to assume that barriers are just a part of the natural order, to think of some people as others, us and them, those people and our people. We start to think that some things are only for some. And of course, this is what we see in our scripture passage that we heard read today. In this passage, Paul is speaking to this fledgling Christian church, uh, the Galatians. Those very first Christian communities had no idea how to be Christian. Which may sound weird to us, but let's be honest, we still have a lot of folks who have no idea how to be Christian. Am I right? In fact, that's one of the reasons why we gather each and every week, so we can continue learning and continue perfecting our love of God and our love of neighbor. But the thing that was really tripping the Galatians up in our scripture passage today was whether Gentiles or non-Jews needed to follow Jewish law, or whether they could accept the resurrection of Jesus as a suitable substitution law for them. Now, don't get me wrong. The law is important. Jesus said that I have come to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. In fact, Jesus followed the law very carefully. And so, the law we find in the Old Testament is important. However, there are some par parts of the law that are no longer applicable in a post-resurrection world. And the first and foremost 
especially for the Galatians, was circumcision. I know, this is the topic that you all want to talk about in mixed company, <laughs> but the Bible, all it does talk about circumcision an awful lot. I apologize for those who are going to have to go home and talk to their children now. <laughs> but this community that was made up of some Jews and some Gentiles couldn't figure out if the Gentiles needed to be circumcised in order to be a Christ follower. Because you see, all of the Jews were circumcised. Jesus would have been circumcised. It was an important part of being Jewish. And I promise soon I'll stop saying the word. <laughs> but did this mean that it was an important part of being a Christian as well? They weren't sure. And what happened is, since nobody knew the answer to this really important question, everyone started making assumptions and putting up in between themselves, you guessed it, barriers. They started to create certain hierarchies, certain us and them categories, and making declarations about who was in and who was out. They started to put each other in boxes and making barriers. And this, my friends, is what the little girl in that 1981 Lego ad was saying when she was interviewed as an adult. Somehow, the beautiful thing that was Lego blocks were being used to put up barriers, especially between boys and girls, that were unnecessary. Sort of like what the Galatians were doing, and also what we do so often in our faith. But, one of the best parts of living in a post-resurrection world is that we always have the opportunity to right a wrong. And this is also what Lego did. In 2021, the Lego Corporation decided to work to break down some of these barriers that have been accidentally put up. They started a campaign for the International Women's Day where modern cre recreations were made of the classic What It Is Is Beautiful ad from 1981. And the campaign was aiming to encourage and champion today's young women on their journey to becoming the decision makers, role models, and change makers of the future. They go on to say that at the Lego Group, we believe children are our role models, and we look to them for inspiration every day and want to help them break down gender stereotypes and create opportunities for everyone. The ad campaign is really beautiful. If you look it up online, you can find it. And they have all of these little girls holding their Lego creations, and it says things like, what it is is imaginative. What it is is creative. What it is is extraordinary. Because Legos, Lego blocks, are for everyone. They are for everyone in the world. And do you know that is still true today? It's still true that Legos are for everyone. And I know this because I have a prop for you. Are you ready for this? You guys liked my props last week, all right? We know that Legos are for everyone because this is a box full of Legos. We're not going to spill it because then it'll be fun. <laughs> Can anybody maybe in the front row see this age range on here? What does it say? Four to 99. <laughs> all right. Now, I don't think they put 99 on there in order to discriminate against 100-year-olds. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is on there in order to just say, this is for everyone. And it does say four years old, but you know that's more for choking hazards and dexterity issues than inclusivity. But Lego puts on their boxes, at least the boxes that are pure creativity, not the sets, that the age range is from four to 99. Because Lego blocks are for everyone. And you know what, my friends? So is Jesus. In our Galatians passage, Paul is trying to sort out the disagreements about barriers and the law. And he does this by saying, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying that Jesus is for everyone. And now, this doesn't mean, my friends, that we do not celebrate our differences. 
We know that even in Christ, there are differences in folks. We are not about uniformity in Christ, but we are about unity in Christ. Because what Jesus does is abolishes the dominance of one over the other based on these differences. Jews should not dominate Gentiles. Free persons should not dominate slaves, and men should not dominate women. Christians should foster harmonious relationships characterized by mutuality and respect for social difference. It's like when we listen to our beautiful choir sing. People are singing different parts. Harmony is the cooperative union of these different voices. The various vocal parts must maintain their distinctiveness, but even as they unite, they create harmony and create unity together. Because Jesus is for everyone, we know that the kingdom of God is beautiful and diverse, and that we are united in Christ, even in our differences. But those differences do not put up barriers saying what something is for and who somebody is not for. Because Jesus, you guys want to say it with me? Jesus is Everyone. I've been doing this with the kids all week, where I would start it and they would finish it, so sorry, I'm just still on that path. <laughs> and likewise, this is one of the things we did try to teach the kids this week at Vacation Bible School. Our kids learned what it takes to be a hero, and they learned that it's things like listening to God, like helping others, showing grace, and working together. They learned that when they work together with everyone, they are able to see glimpses of the kingdom of God, and they're able to save the day. They learned that Jesus is for everyone. Now, it's true that I don't have a toy box with an age range on it like I do our Lego box to show you that Jesus is for everyone, but I do have this. This, my friends, is our baptismal font. This is what we use when people come up to be baptized in Christ. Countless men, women, children of every ethnicity, of every race, gender, sexuality have come to this font in order to be baptized in this place. And even if, they, if you haven't come to this font, the font is available for you anytime, anywhere. This font is our symbol that we are baptized in Christ. And because we are baptized in Christ, it is for everyone. And so it may not have the age range on it, but this symbol is for us all. Because baptism, because Christ is for us all. And so friends, I know that there are a million different messages coming to you in your life, telling you what you should believe about yourself and what you should believe about others. There are a million different messages trying to put you in a box. There are a million different messages trying to raise barriers between you and others. But hear me, in this place, we believe that the church is the great leveling field. Many markers that matter in other places don't matter here. And that's because Jesus is for everyone. Just like Lego blocks. Absolutely everyone. And so you might have noticed our little church setup that we built here, we've added to it. We've got some congregation members down there now. And we're going to keep adding to it all summer long as we go through this series. In fact, the kids are currently making themselves so that they can come and add those characters as well. And so we're going to keep adding folks as we go. Because this right here, St. Paul United Methodist Church, Jesus Christ is for everyone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
Friends, as we go to the Lord in prayer today, I invite you to see the prayer list that is on the insert in your bulletin. If you have names that you would like to add to this list, you can find prayer cards in our pews. You can also submit them on our website, or just let me know and I'll make sure that it gets on there. Yesterday, we gathered here in this place and celebrated the life of Tom Sweeney, who passed away about two weeks ago. You can see the beautiful flowers on the table that are in his memory. We ask that you continue to keep his husband, Bill, in your prayers and his entire family as they continue to grieve and mourn that loss. And so now, friends, as we go to the Lord in prayer, I invite you to lift up the names and situations that are on your hearts and minds, and we'll respond to each petition by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord Truman Adams, Francis Truman. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Douglas Webster. Lord, hear our prayer. Our troops and their families. Lord, hear our prayer. Margaret Kaiser. Lord, hear our prayer. Jerry Bell. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. United Methodist Church. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, holy, loving, and gracious God, from the depths of our souls we cry to the depth of your love. O oh Lord, in you we take refuge. In this day we come to you with gratitude for the gift of our messy, complicated, and joyful lives. We know that you are in all of it, that you are with us, and we are so grateful to you that we are your children. Send your light and truth to lead us to your presence. And for the gift of this day, O oh Lord, and this time to worship in your house, we ask that you would hear the prayers that we have said together, prayers of thanks, prayers of concern, prayers of deep sorrow, and that it would rise to you like incense. We ask that you would lead us into deeper community, that we may offer your grace to each other, to all others, and be your presence in each other's lives. Lord, for the gift of this earth and the beauty of your creation, we give you thanks. We offer prayers of healing for your creation. May we walk lightly on this earth and be good stewards of all that you have given us. And Lord, this day we pray for people in need of your healing and restoration. May thirsty souls find relief for their longing. May hungry hearts be fed a meal rich in mercy and grace. Hear our prayers for the people we know to be in need of healing, for those who are in need of wholeness and comfort and peace. And Lord, for those places around our globe that are at risk from war or famine, we ask that you would be with them. For disasters wrought by humans or by nature, we offer prayers for relief, for comfort, and for healing. Guide the leaders of all nations in the ways of peace that we may seek mercy and justice together. And Lord, as we go out into the world, help us to see that you are for everyone. In any of the boxes that we try to put others in, any of the barriers that we might erect, that it is our job to tear them down and to be unified together, Lord, a place where we can celebrate our differences and be more and more like your kingdom on earth. Our hope is in you, O Lord, and it is in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ that we offer these prayers this day as we say together the prayer that your Son taught us, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, one of the ways that we give back to this messy, complicated world is through our tithes and offerings. We take those tithes and offerings, and as a community of faith, we use them in order to bring about love and peace and healing in all the ways that we can. And so this morning, as I invite our ushers to come forward for our morning tithes and offerings, know that your gifts, your generosity, make a difference here at St. Paul and in the world. Amen.
out into our community in love and service. I would call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. We have a, a couple of uh, outreach opportunities here. Actually, today, if you would like to stay after service for just a little while, we're going to make 100 sandwiches, <laughs> um, sandwich bags for guests at uh, Central Presbyterian Outreach and Advocacy Center today. So uh, we're going to be going up the steps here to the fellowship hall. We'll have all the spread set out. Shouldn't take a whole lot of time. <clears throat> so um, if you'd like to come and uh, be a part of that ministry and outreach to our community, we would invite you to do that. Um, also, uh, the St. Paul Kids Serve Camp kicked off this week right after Bible study. Boy, what a week it was here <laughs> at St. Paul. Um, and to catch their breath, they're gonna take off this week, but we'll be back on uh, June 19th for week two uh, for the uh, St. Paul Kids Serve Camps. Uh, finally, if uh, you uh, would like to stay after and just for a few minutes for cookies and conversation, we have set up over here in uh, Chester Commons, my left, your right. Uh, we would invite you, even if you can't stay for the uh, sandwich making, please do join us for just a few minutes of cookies and conversation. We'll get to know you and have some uh, lemonade and uh, uh, cookies from Bible, Vacation Bible School. Uh, when I was a kid, the Vacation Bible School cookies, we had the round ones with a hole in the yeah. middle, and you put them on your pinky yeah. and eat around them. Anybody else do that? Oh, it's yeah. a Vacation Bible School thing. Do we have any round cookies over here with holes in the middle? Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to come over and see. <laughs> hope, I hope we do. <laughs> Our last hymn is number 548 in your hymnal. I would invite you to stand in body and spirit and sing together. In Christ there is no east or west. Number 548. who creates and redeems and sustains. Go in peace. Amen.
Thank you. 